are now going to take this time to recap a major moment in history. 60 years ago today, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. That tragic event ushered in the world of television news that we know today. For the first time in its short history, television news was called upon to provide minute by minute live updates and to show the world indelible images that will never be forgotten. Here's a story that John Small aired in 2013 on the 50th anniversary of the assassination. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. There had been large viewing shows before, but it was the first time that everybody flocked to their television for a program. UMaine journalism professor Mike Sokolow says by the time JFK's funeral was held, three days after the assassination, 93% of televisions in America were on watching the coverage. I think it's the first real memory of television people would have because television wasn't exactly new, but it wasn't a, a very good source of news because film took a long time to develop. News wasn't very timely. The evening news shows had been 15 minutes up until just two months before. Nothing like this had ever happened before. Former CBS News anchor Dan Rather, who was in Dallas the day Kennedy was shot, has said everything was happening so fast when it came to how they covered the event, they had to make it up as they went along. Television news came of age in the four dark days in Dallas. Considerable confusion in the immediate vicinity. Right there was the spot where the president was shot. Perhaps the most talked about moment still today is the official announcement of Kennedy's death from CBS News anchor Walter Cronkite. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. And Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital. Nobody had lived through the assassination of a president, and the emotion in Cronkite's voice mirrored what the country was feeling. Yes, he, he was sad and grieving, I think, but he was shocked. I think that's the, that's the overriding emotion in that moment, and that's where it fits with everybody, is that everybody was just shocked. Making it even more personal for thousands of Mainers was the fact they had seen the president in person just a month earlier, speaking at the University of Maine. And so I think there was this kind of visceral sense of people who had seen Kennedy recently and suddenly here on television you're hearing this news. And I think it, it, it wasn't just here in Bangor but also in Dallas and in other places where the president had visited. He had such a, a compelling sort of personality about him that people really remembered seeing him and being with him. Television news had passed the test in forming and comforting a grieving nation something Americans still expect today. They might hear about it somewhere else. Like, we know that a lot of people hear about breaking news, like on 9-11, from a telephone call or from the radio as they're driving, because it happened right after rush hour. But immediately they find a television. And that was John Small with that report from 2013. Two days after suspected gunman Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested, he was fatally shot by Jack Ruby on live television in the basement of Dallas Police Headquarters.